the most remote outpost of the National Wrestling Alliance, Polynesian Pacific Pro Wrestling, was a territory like no other, with its beautiful scenery masking the dangerous underbelly of an unhinged wrestling culture. If you were in Hawaii, you had to be hardcore, you had to be violent. Polynesia is alive and on fire. People don't understand how influential Polynesian Pro Wrestling was. It was like a kingdom of its own. And the greatest chapter in history! Polynesian people are few in this world. Our contribution to the professional wrestling business is definitely outsized when you compare it to our numbers. It set my career off. I got into business in 1979. I was a little Weasley manager. Thank God I went to Hawaii. I might not be sitting here today with you wonderful people. Halfway between the United States and Japan, Hawaii was a valuable strategic location. You try to jump me, Kevin Sullivan, your arm or your leg is gonna be broken before you leave that building. That made it a breeding ground for intrigue and betrayal. People don't understand, and we do, how influential Polynesian pro wrestling was. In Hawaii of the old days, Back in the 60s, you know, when I was a kid, there were only a couple stations on television. You watch wrestling or you watch nothing. To me, it was a dream come true. My three biggest idols in the wrestling business are King Curtis, Mark Lewin, and The Sheik. And I had the, all three of them in Hawaii with me, <laughs> having the best time of my life. <laughs> Hawaii was a very instrumental place. It was separated from the United States. So when guys were going to Japan, they were just stopping over and wrestling in Honolulu. The planes had to refuel. You had no choice but to stop in Honolulu. The sheik came in. We got him red hot. You see the police outside? People are throwing things now. The giant, Flair, Nikita, Dusty. The vastly popular Magnum T. Hey! This was really unique. It was like an open city, as you remember. We had people stopping over for our shows, and one of the reasons why everybody stopped was to pay homage to your dad, the great King uh, Curtis. Thank you. Here comes the tide coming in, the big splash. My dad started when I was just a baby. If you were a wrestling fan and you saw him in his youth, you said, I don't want to get in the ring with that guy. My dad, he liked violence. He liked it hardcore. He liked it as bloody and as nasty and as horrible as it could possibly be. The territory was home to many unique characters like King Curtis, but none were more legendary than High Chief Peter Maivia. A Samoan by birth, Peter honed his craft in New Zealand before traveling to Hawaii, where he founded Polynesian Pacific Pro Wrestling with his wife, Leah, creating a multi-generational wrestling dynasty that continues today. Honored and revered by their fans, the territory not only put Samoans on the wrestling map, it also showed the world that their culture was a force to be reckoned with. And for those who didn't want to accept it, they learned the hard way. It all comes from Peter. He was a paramount type chief. I mean, he was the top, top peer yeah. in the Samoan culture. A super nice guy, but he was tough as nails, too. Oh. Oh. Uh, you know the story about Billy Robbins, one of the greatest shooters in the history of our business. For the people that are watching that don't know, shooter is like somebody knows how to actually wrestle, not just work, as we say, you know. Bone know, breakers. Knows how to break yeah. the bones. Billy was a little bit jealous. Peter had the charisma. Peter had the looks. Well, you know the thing about Peter and the fight with Billy? Wasn't that in a restaurant? Yeah, apparently Billy Robinson and Peter were eating at a restaurant and Peter was eating with his fingers. Right. And Billy Robinson said, what are you, a, a, a heathen? Or are you a savage? Yeah. Use a fork. Bad thing to say. And it just it set him off the wrong way. And then, you know, well, y'all tell the story. Because uh, Peter nailed him and rocked him, and he fell down. And they got on top of him and pulled his eye out. I heard that Peter threw Billy Robinson right through the restaurant window. He did. He paid the price. And that's why Billy always had that crooked eye. You know, any sign of disrespect is, uh, 
is taken real personally. Yeah, I mean, no one wants to be disrespected, whatever culture right. you're from.